A real estate contract is the agreement between the buyer and seller of real estate that governs the transactions. In the most basic sense, the real estate sales contract contains the seller's agreement to sell and the buyer's agreement to buy the real estate at a specific price. The real estate contract contains various warranties or promises regarding the ownership, condition, and title status of the real estate. Contingencies for things going wrong, like destruction of the property, or the buyer's inability to obtain a loan are also included. Depending on the state, a real estate sales contract can be 4 to 14 pages. For commercial real estate, a purchase and sales contract could be 100 pages long. The real estate contract, also called an agreement of sale, represents a meeting of the minds of the parties. Both the buyer and seller have certain terms and conditions they want as part of the transaction. By having everything written down in the real estate contract, an objective party, like a closing attorney or a court of law, can determine what the parties want and intend. If there is a question of whether the light fixtures were meant to be included in the sale, one only has to look at the written contract. A meeting of the minds is necessary to have a valid contract. Often, there are questions of whether the parties even have an enforceable contract. If the buyer sends a contract draft to the seller, and the seller sends a different draft to the buyer, have they made a meeting of the minds? The answer depends on a number of factors. Did the buyer go forward with the transaction after receiving the seller's draft? Was money exchanged at some point? Was there a repudiation or rejection? Without a meeting of the minds, the courts will not enforce a contract. Specific performance of the terms of the contract or monetary damages will not be ordered if there was, in fact, no contract. The real estate sales contract can be prepared by a number of different people. Who prepares the contract usually depends on the state where the real estate is located, the type of real estate, and the local laws and customs of the jurisdiction. In theory, a buyer or seller could prepare their own real estate contract. There are countless cases on the books where an individual, looking to save money, drafted their own real estate contract. There was a famous case in Georgia where a contract for a $700,000 parcel of commercial real estate was drafted on the back of a napkin on the hood of a car. Real estate professionals, lawyers, and non-lawyers alike strongly discourage this practice because of the inevitability of conflict. In states like New York, real estate contracts are generally drafted by licensed attorneys. Real estate brokers and agents show the property and negotiate basic terms, but the contract itself is worked out by lawyers. In other states, the real estate contract is drafted by non-attorney real estate agents. The agents are licensed by the state, are required to pass exams, and maintain professional standards through continuing education. Real estate agents work under the supervision of licensed real estate brokers. Real estate contracts prepared by agents are usually fill-in-the-blank forms that are universally used by all agents in the state. The forms are provided by local real estate agent associations and have been vetted by local attorneys. Pennsylvania has another category of real estate professionals called licensees. A licensee is authorized to prepare a real estate contract but do little else. They are not agents or brokers, and they are certainly not attorneys. A licensee is essentially a scribe who puts the terms of a real estate contract 
into a prepared format. The licensee cannot negotiate on behalf of or represent either party in the real estate transaction. These variables usually only apply to residential real estate contracts. For commercial real estate contracts, except for limited, small transactions, these contracts are almost universally drafted by attorneys. Commercial real estate contracts are very complicated and involve different types of real estate with buildings that can have a number of uses. The use of the building, the condition of the land, financing terms, environmental considerations, and transfers of leases are all part of a typical commercial real estate transaction. Because the role of licensees is limited by law, one must be very careful not to drift into the unauthorized practice of law. Unauthorized practice of law occurs when a non-lawyer, a person without a valid law license, provides legal advice to another for a fee or other consideration. The most obvious case of unauthorized practice of law is when a non-lawyer represents another person in court through personal appearance in the court or written pleadings. That's easy. In the context of contract negotiation, the line is rather blurred. Is advising a prospective buyer about a fair purchase price legal advice? Likely not. The price of the real estate is purely a business matter. But what about negotiating contingencies if the sale falls apart? The agent is then required to tell the party about the implications and definition of default and how to best handle that situation. That is far closer to legal advice. Agents are, of course, licensed and permitted to give limited advice in their narrow field. Licensees, on the other hand, are more like scribes. They write the terms the others tell them and leave the rest to the attorneys. The unauthorized practice of law is a crime in many states. If a licensee is convicted of unauthorized practice of law, he may have his license suspended or revoked and he may be fined for violating state law. These are very serious implications, especially if one relies on that license for their livelihood. Any time the licensee wishes to apply for another license in another industry, they'll be required to disclose the suspension or revocation of their licensee privileges. When there's even the slightest question of whether certain advice falls into the practice of law context, it is best to let the attorneys handle it. Attorneys should be the ones to negotiate and modify a real estate contract in states where that is the norm. With attorneys, there is never a question about unauthorized practice of law.